guys. So I just found this stuff. Some kind of... Uh, it's medium density fiberboard or something, about three millimeters, and then it's got a clear, it's it's made to be dry erase board. I think it's, uh, I, my old shed quarters uh, had dry erase board panels instead of drywall. And I think that's what it is. I'm not exactly sure what that is. I've got my power at 20%, um, but I just kind of wanted to show you um, how, this, how this thing works again, because I'm so pleased and awed by the uh, light burn camera. So I'm gonna close the lid and uh, let the exposure adjust so that I can see the material. There'll be a little shadow here. I might add a strip of LEDs underneath the pantry or something somehow, or do something, diffuse the light. Uh, but I'm gonna update the overlay, and show it. And that's actually the screen. If I don't fade it, that's what I'm seeing. There's that piece of wood that I put in there, whatever the material is. So I'm going to fade it back out. And I already made something here uh, just to save time. But it only took me about five minutes to make this. I have not done anything to the image. I just imported it. That's it. And resized it. And I think that's something that I probably do need to look at, although I don't know that much about it. So in the cuts panel, we'll go to the image, and it's doing threshold. Um, I'm really thinking about doing newsprint. And um, I hope my power's right. I don't have any of that saved in my library, but if it works, I'm going to be sure to save it. Matter of fact, I'm going to save this right now. what's going to happen. So we do the text first, then the image. Whoa, two passes on the image? I don't think so. Did you see that? Did you notice that on playback? Here's the first one, and then boom, it goes over again. So I've got a setting wrong in my image. That's why preview is always good. See, number of passes, two. I need one pass. Now let's preview it again. Yep, only once. Okay, I think I'm going to have to do two passes on the outside to actually cut through this stuff because it's got a lot of glue in it. So let's go ahead and do that too. Sorry that it's taken so long. I just want to fine tune some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to send it home and uh, recapture the overlay, update the overlay just to make sure that that looks good and it hasn't shifted or anything. I already checked my focus. Um, fixed to turn on my air. Got my exhaust on. My water's on. I'm at 20 degrees. So, um, let's just go for it. It looks like I'm not caught enough. I knew that stuff was pretty tough that was on it. We'll see. This may be a real good candidate for masking it and then etching it and then, you know, infill with paint or stain or whatever. Since that's a veneer on there that's some sort of carbonite or something uh, I don't think it would bleed it would bleed underneath it but you wouldn't see it I think you'd have really clear lines let me open this back up and you can see what's happening it's actually cutting through and getting to the wood there's just no contrast it's white and I'm not hitting that MDF hard enough to actually charge I'm barely getting to the surface 
So I don't think this is going to be successful uh, in as far as coming out with a product that's worthy, but I think it's been very valuable learning about the different materials. This is why you should never ask, tell me what the settings are for this if I'm doing this. I mean, sure, you could argue that somebody could get you close if they have a similar machine and at least give you a guideline or a reference point. But then you're starting from a skewed angle. You should start from the point of view that your brain looks at it as, not as someone else looks at it. And start from that. And, and then you'll always retain it because it's your thought process instead of someone else's. And I'm even going to let this run all the way through because I want to make sure I'm not getting any serial com disconnects from the chiller kicking on and off. Uh, I had some issues with some of that stuff. Um, I want to make sure it doesn't skip. This is a pretty long job. I want to see how the newsprint comes out, even though there won't be very, very much contrast there. This will be a lot better on a you know, like an uh, anodized license plate or something. You know? And if it looks good coming out on here, I might just make it a license plate. So, I don't know that I'll bore you with this whole video. The scan interval looks a little wild, or I need to pull out of focus a little bit, which is probably even better. But that's a really neat effect, actually. I bet if you took some dark stain real lightly and just dabbed it on there and took it back off, it'd wipe right off that white stuff. And it would leave a really neat contrast. Or it would look like shit. I don't know. I'm going to try it, though. I don't know if I'll let the video run the whole time while I'll try it. Because this thing's got a long way to go. I'll tell you what, I'll post a part two to this one, uh, win, lose, or draw, and um, show you the results and uh, my findings more importantly. Alrighty, until next time, take a bravo, I'm out. Okay, I had to kick this little part in. This is not part two, this is an addendum to part one. I'm really pleased with the uh, vector that it's doing on that bottom. I set that text to line instead of fill. And it's crazy sharp. I need to wipe it down. And now it's doing the newsprint. Yeah, I think I might have some here. Okay. Screw it, I'm just gonna let it run. I got 634 minutes left on this um, SD card that's in this camera I'm recording with. And I got uh, almost 900 minutes on battery. That's what I love about this camera. I love this camera. It can sit in the bag for a month and I can take it out and it's ready. I'll have six, seven hours more time continuous if I want it and it won't skip a beat ever unless I forget to hit the record button I'm not going to talk about that right Okay, so maybe there won't be a part two. I'm at 20% on this job according to Lightroom. We can discuss some other things. I'm still at 20 degrees on my chiller. It is a cool day. Got a cool evening in here. I don't know the ambient temperature. I need to, I need to do that. I'm really digging. What's coming out here? 
shed quarters a little bit and there's that job going that's my camera that's a c100 with the uh, dual pixel auto focus upgrade it's got a 4k uh, sensor in it but it is a crop sensor so there's a one and a half crop factor um, but it's a steady solid cinema camera for running gun it's an awesome camera and I got an STM a stepper motor lens on here um, an 18 to 135 I just messed up our other video there but I'm pretty pleased a um, little bit about Odin um, there's the GLCD I'm running a cohesion mini the guts are ugly. I don't even know if I want to open it up and show you the insides. Now, I left the digital panel. Um, should have just put a pot there. I'd have, have a whole lot more real estate on the panel. But I figured it lights up and looks cool. So heck, so what? Uh, I'm going to backlight this thing. I keep saying I will. All right, I'll open it. And there's for my Z-axis. I've got another one I haven't installed yet for a rotary. And there's my little Cohesion Mini down there. I am running the cluster firmware made for the laser board. I might have mentioned that already. Um, so I haven't capped that off yet. And yes, I'm afraid that I'm going to break the end of it off. If I just knock the uh, water jacket off, the output coupler, I'll blow it back on. But it just so happens that I keep a spare tube. And yeah, yeah, they have a shelf life, I know. But guess what? I've got one, and I got it real cheap. So I'm going to take my chances on it. Unless somebody wants to buy it. Anything's for sale. That's not bad. Not bad. So there's my tube temp. That's just an aquarium chiller on the bottom. I've got about three gallons. I've done this in some other videos. I'm being repetitive, I know. Probably about three gallons in the entire system, including the tubing, peripherals, uh, tube, and the whole bit. And I'm just running that little... Uh, aerator uh, aquarium pump on my little copper pipe. That's the greatest thing. Um, other than that, I've added the dual stage lighting on that 
magnetic reed switch right there. So when that magnet contacts, those lights will come on. So you'll have some downward uh, for the light burn camera. You'll have some overhead lighting. It'll reduce shadows and help disperse it some. I'm going to add another one for the lid. I had one on Cyclops to kill the laser if the lid's open. But I do so many videos with the lid open. I should probably put it on there anyway and just use an extra magnet as a defeat tool. Um, also, while we're talking about it, the, you see I hacked the bottom out of this thing and it's sitting on a cart, which I love. This thing's totally portable. I've got a telescopic pole here and enough tubing that I can extend it eight feet in the air and get it above, at least above everybody's heads if you're going to a trade show or you're outside or something like that. I do have a regulator on, uh, on the uh, pump, the aquarium pump. I had to alter this on the bottom. It had a spring in it, and this thing cavitates a little bit. Um, so it was causing this to rattle and leak out the bottom, so I had to modify it uh, where the water would automatically come out. But then all i got to do is push up on it and still pull. I switched the position of the spring, and it'll still work for a regular. And I just have it pushed over my regular thing so I can always grab my little pancake compressor over here and hook her up if I need a little more air um, but portability was my big thing and then I've got this um, Lenovo all-in-one touch scran running over here I quit recording over on it but that's okay so yeah we'll just do the whole thing I did this two passes I did not put it on my pin bed damn it <laughs> So there's another thing. That's all right. If it charged the back of it a little bit, it won't matter as long as it cuts through. I wish it could get all the way through and get some air underneath it. Might want to tend to fire up under the bottom, see? Because all that smoke and, and ash and stuff that's still burning is just smoldering under there. It's sitting on the pin bed with the exhaust and the air assist. It kind of does a decent job of blowing it out. We'll see how this works. Like I said, this is an experiment for me. I've always built lasers. I've never made products. And I'm starting to do that um, because I'm currently uh, not working full time. And if I could make enough actual product um, to sustain myself, I'd really like to spend my remaining years uh, not just playing with lasers, but making money with them and helping other people make money with them. That's what I've been doing for four years on all these groups, is helping everybody. So uh, maybe y'all check out my store and, and uh, help me out too. That'd be cool. But anyway, the light burn camera is the game changer. I love it, I love it. All right, two passes and pretty much, I might be a little uneven, but that is not bad. That is not bad. Clean it up a little bit. All right. I'm gonna consider that a success, actually. Considering I wasn't sure what, uh, how this substrate was gonna react. So I had no idea the settings. I don't think I'm confident enough that I'm gonna add them to the library yet. However, um, for about an eight minute workflow over here, and then I'll have to look at the video. However long over here, I could probably look it up over here somewhere. Anyway, um, I think it's cool. Anyway, no part two. This was the video in its entirety. Sorry if it was so long. Coming to you from the global shed quarters of Bravo Technologies. Tech Bravo is out.